Hi. Hi. Coffee. Not coffee. I'm Dr. Angela Graves. <laughs> I'm Alex Nance. What is this that we are doing, Miss Angela? So this thing that we're doing is we're answering some questions and we're giving some communication tips for people who don't hear so well. Okay. So this isn't so much a like a YouTube video where Dr. Angel is talking directly to the camera. That's my job. Hi. But this is uh, more of a conversation between you and I and because we get along so well and we goof around a lot. Yeah, we do, but I really am a professional. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been an audiologist for 30 years, give or take, um, and what I want to do is share with you some of the things that over the course of the past 30 years I've learned, and, and I've learned a thing or two. So here's where I would start. Alright. At the beginning? At the beginning. It's a very fine place to start. So I was born October 12th, 1985, is that where we started from? Let's, uh, let's run it up a little bit. Run it up a little bit. Uh, I would like to know because this was my first encounter with not necessarily hearing loss but earwax as i don't think I, I may have told you this but i may not have listened a few years ago i was trying to clean out my ears with uh q-tips wrong and i ended up getting a chunk that was pushed into the eardrum <coughs> yeah and then of course i went after it and I, could, and I couldn't get it. No. Nope. So I waited and just left it alone. And then one night I was taking a bath. I let my head soak in the tub. And then I started <laughs> so to... So you soaked your head? I soaked my head. But the, uh, the water got into my ears. And then as I got out of the tub, I started feeling something in my ear. It felt uh -huh. a little odd. So I was rubbing around. And then after a while, my wife Megan said, "You've got, you've got stuff, just oozing out, and that clump had finally come out." So, Q-tips, you said, "No, bad idea." Why are Q-tips a bad idea? Well, obviously you just explained it because you'll get some out and you'll push some back in. The water, wax is water soluble, so soaking your head in the tub is a very good idea, and it. It does bring that wax out. In the normal ear, wax comes out by itself. Now, why do we have too much? That's, that's a very good question. Everybody's different. If you don't have any wax in your ears, you know, then you're going to have itchy ear canals. It's going to be dry and exactly. Please don't. I knew you were going to do that. Stop. So uh, anyway, earwax has some really good features to it. Mm -hmm. um, the, my favorite one is that it's antifungal. That's really cool. Your ear canal is warm, it's dark, it's moist, it is the perfect environment for mold to grow. But because of the antifungal properties in the earwax, we don't have, like, you know, cheese oozing out of our ears. Q-tip's a bad idea. Q-tip's a bad idea. Can people use Q-tips? Well, can they? They are physically capable, yes, of using Q-tips. I think we're probably going to have to edit that part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, if somebody can't use Q-tips, what advice would you have for them to clean out their ears? Well, the, the water, the soak your head in the tub, rinse your head, rinse your ears in the shower when you're taking your shower on a daily basis. What about itchy ears? Itchy ears. If you've got itchy ears, and you're pretty sure that you do have earwax, uh, some people use a little bit of olive oil, mm -hmm. and you can put just a little bit of olive oil on your fingertip, really regular olive oil that you cook with, and then rub it in your ear canal before you go to bed. Uh, if you have too much olive oil in there, it's just going to run out on the pillow at night. I wouldn't do it every night. I mean, once a week would probably not be a bad idea. Okay. It's so helpful. I've seen it on the internet, so you know it's true. So, and it, I, I love to do this. I do this all the time. I know what you're going to say, don't I? You might. What about... Ear candle. I knew you were going to say that. It Wait. helps, Angela. I swear, I've tried this before on myself, and it really helps. I've seen stuff on it. 
All right, so we'll talk about air candling. Um, but you don't have to take my word for it. You can always go to the Mayo Clinic website and you can look up ear candling there and they will show you that ear candling is a hoax. Now, Alex knows that ear candling works. I know it. I've seen it. He's seen it work. So if ear candling is done correctly, the lights are dim, there's music playing, you've probably got some something to drink. This is water, so this wouldn't really work. Um, and you've got, <laughs> you've got friends sitting around chatting, and one friend lays their head down on another friend's lap. Something like that. The ear candle is then jammed, I mean gently, Ow. placed in the ear canal. You're supposed to stop when there's resistance. Yeah, and then the end is lit. The wax is then supposedly drawn up into the candle as it burns down due to a vacuum pull in the ear canal because you do have an airtight seal in the ear canal, gently placed. Then when you're done with the candle and it hasn't caught your hair on fire because you are being very careful, then you're allowed to cut the candle open and look at all the wax that you've drawn out of there. The wax is in the candle to start with. It's kind of an accelerant, you know, that's, that's what you're burning. So anyway, if you don't believe me, go look at uh, the mail website, or you could just get an ear candle and burn it in a tin pan and then cut it open and you can see the wax for yourself. Doesn't it also leave like a thin layer of residue? in the ear? Does it do that? I honestly don't know. It's been a while since I've seen it. It depends on, you know, how often you do this. I mean, if you do this once a week, maybe, but if you shower in between, you should be okay. Okay. But there was this, it's almost like a corkscrew. Oh yeah, the ear auger thing. Yeah. Have you seen that? Well, obviously you have. Have you looked <laughs> into that to see how useful that is or true that is? or? Well, I did have a client say that it worked. And then he said, not really. So yeah, I mean, these things are on the market. You can stick anything in your ear. You shouldn't stick anything in your ear smaller than your elbow. But you can stick anything in your ear. It's just not a great idea. Do these ear augers work? Depends on what your goal is. If your goal is to make money selling ear augers, yeah, they're going to work. As far as actually putting that thing in your ear and twisting it down toward your eardrum, I am a little hesitant to do something like that. So you're more at risk for damaging your ear canal and your eardrum much than, actually, more. than actually getting it cleaned. Yeah, much more. Um, people will say, oh, well, I know how to do this. That's fine. You know how to do this. I had a fellow who knows how to use Q-tips. Well, uh, what did he do? Answered the phone? On top of the Q tip? <laughs> now he knows how to use Q tips. <laughs> and he knows how to answer the phone. You don't do those two together. Oh, you didn't tell me that one. Did ah, you tell me that one? I didn't know that one. Oh, yeah. Ugh. When I saw the client, active bleeding in the ear canal, mm. ruptured eardrum, not a pretty sight. Gross. Very. What can we do here, as in this office? You mean if you've got a big plug of wax in there and you can't get rid of it? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked it. <laughs> we have video endoscopy. So here at Hearing Healthcare Center, Dr. Angela provides these services. <laughs> Cerumen management through video endoscopy. On a big screen, in living color, we can show you how much earwax you have in your ear canal. And then we can gently remove it with a tiny little curette. Again, in living color, so you can see what's going on. The reason I like using the camera is because when I pull the wax out, I can be very careful that I don't touch the eardrum, that I don't scrape the ear canal, and that I get the wax that's there. Just speaking from what I've heard here in the office from other clients, mm -hmm. but I've lost count of the amount of times, and correct me if I'm mistaken, but with the amount of people who have said they've seen their physician or, or someone, their caregiver, and they've hurt their ears, scraping the earwax out. We, we had one lady who said several times, she was so gentle. 
<laughs> she was so very gentle. And a lot of times people go see their primary care and they're told, yep, you got wax in there. And that's the end of the story. They, they don't take the wax out because they don't like to. And how focused is a primary care physician on just the ears? Well, the ears, they're, they're right, right here. It's, it's that, that big. Mm -hmm. Compared to the whole body, your primary care is really more interested in keeping you healthy, physically. So for something like that, it's best to go to somebody who professional, who is a, uh, who professes, who professes somebody who specializes in that area. Specializes, that's much better. Yes, dictionary. I don't read it. <laughs> well, you know, oh well, that would be ended it out too, so never mind. <laughs> you mentioned it earlier, but something that I really think is cool is that the clients can actually see on the screen. Oh, absolutely. Because, because the, what she's using to remove the earwax with has a camera on the end, and you can see it on the screen, whereas most of the primary care physicians, you just kind of have to take their word. And, and not that we don't trust people, because but you know, we, we want to trust people. But it's also something else to see it with your own eyes, But too. to see it with your own eyes, to take some ownership in. Wow, that's, that's my eardrum. Really? That, that's my eardrum? Ew, gross. Oh, that yeah. wax is nasty. It's like, oh, honey, this is nothing. <laughs> We've had one lady who came in and asked if she could do a live stream while she's yes. removing it, which is hilarious. And I... I'm not opposed to it. I don't think she ever did, but well, she did record it. She yeah, she did. She didn't do a live she stream. She did do a live stream, but she recorded it. So but it is. I mean, it. if people love Dr. Pimple Popper, why can't they have Dr. Earwax Remover? <laughs> Dr. Angela, champion of earwax. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a title that we should want. Probably not. <laughs> as far as earwax goes, I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else to add? I really don't. Earwax is pretty cool in a nasty. Disgusting sort of way. In a Shrek way. In a Shrek... Oh. <laughs> I hate that scene. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> Thanks for watching today. Come back later and maybe we'll have something like truly disgusting to share. I love how you said, okay, that's enough. And then continue to end. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time on Cues. Oh, you're supposed to do that. We'll see you next time on Cues. And Tips. Bye for now.